What's up, everyone? Welcome back. Patrick here. Moving on to the next question, dealing with transformations of quadratics. So what we have to do is describe the transformations for each of these parabolas that were undergone from that base function y equals x squared. So what we did was we took the base function, applied some transformations, and we got these graphs over here. So we just have to describe the transformations. Now, hopefully you're watching this on the website because I've gone through videos describing the different transformations that can take place. So when I'm going through this, I'm assuming that you've watched those videos. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go to the website. The link is in the description box. And I highly recommend watching these videos in order because there's a lot of carryover. So just as a quick review from those videos, what we did was we took x squared and we said we're gonna transform it and the format it's gonna take is this right here. And we went through those three different transformation values, the A, H, and K, and described the different transformations that happen with each of those, depending on what kind of values they take. And so what we're gonna to have to do with all these is figure out what is the A, H, or K value, and then describe the transformations. Now, if you notice here, we're not, yet going to be combining the transformations. We're still looking at each of the transformations separately. And I looked at each of those separately. I had separate videos for the A, H, and K. And so what we did was instead of looking it, uh, at it as a whole, what we did was we looked at each of those transformation values separately. And so notice that these over here, they're in one of these three formats, except for the last one. This one's actually going to combine an A value and a K value, but the rest, we're just looking at the A, H, and K still separately. And then in future videos, we're going to be combining them. So just wanted to mention that. So let's go through each of these. I'll write the answers starting over here. Notice first we got Y equals 2X squared. So which of these three is it in that format? Well, notice it's in that y equals ax squared format. So notice, let me actually put a line here. So notice for part a, we have an a value of two, okay? And then what does an a value of two mean? Well, from that video where we describe the different a values that can happen, this here means there's a vertical stretch by a factor of two, right? That's the only transformation that is done on y equals x squared to get to y equals two x squared. So in this case, the h value is zero, the k value is zero. So there's no shift left or right or up and down. Now moving on to part b, we got y equals x squared minus three. So which of these formats is it? Well, notice it's this x squared plus k format. So in part b, what happens is we have a k value of negative three over here. And a k value of negative three, what does that mean? Well, remember a k value deals with vertical translations or shifts up and down. So a negative three means that the graph is translated or shifted. You could use either or, translated three units down like that, right? That's the only transformation that happens in part B. Okay, let's move on to part C. We got y equals negative three over four x squared. Which one of these formats is it? Notice it's the ax squared. So the a value in this case is negative three over four. And what does an a value of negative three over four? Well, notice this is like negative 0.75. Okay, so first off, if it's negative, we already know there's a reflection in the x-axis, right? Or we can also say that the um, parabola points downwards or opens downwards, but usually you'll see this transformation. It's a reflection in the x-axis. So we took care of the negative. What about that three over four? Well, three over four, notice that's 0.75 and that's between zero and one. So we know 
that there's also a vertical compression by a factor of three over four. We put the positive value, right? I described that in previous videos as well. Okay, so if it's negative three over four, we take care of the negative by saying there's a reflection, and then we just assume that we're just dealing with the three over four, which is a vertical compression by three over four. If it was positive three over four, there wouldn't be any reflection in the x-axis. We would just say a vertical compression by three over four. All right, so that's part C. Now, what about part D? Part D, notice we have y equals five over four x squared. So out of all these formats, which one is it? Well, it's the ax squared again. But notice in this case, we got a equals five over four. Now you gotta be careful here. This is a fraction, but what is this fraction? If we take the decimal of this, notice it's gonna be 1.25. And notice that's an a value that's greater than one. And if an a value is greater than one, then we know we're dealing with a vertical stretch by a factor of five over four or 1.25. Okay, the reason why this one can sometimes be tricky is a lot of times, remember a compression happens between zero and one. And so a lot of times that factor is gonna be a fraction or a decimal. However, you can't always assume that just because something's gonna be a fraction that it's gonna be a compression because a lot of times a fraction can be greater than one. Okay, so just be careful. Most fractions you're gonna get with these kinds of questions, usually they're gonna be between zero and one, so it's going to be a compression, but sometimes teachers can throw in a fraction, but it'll actually be greater than one. And then in that case, you're not dealing with a compression, you're dealing with a stretch. Right, so that's part D. What about part E? We got x plus six squared. So notice that in this case, we're dealing with this format. So we're dealing with an h value. And if you remember from those videos, we have a plus six here, means the h value is actually negative six. Because this we can rewrite as x minus negative six. And then notice it's in that x minus h format, right? x minus h, x minus negative six. So the h is negative six, and notice that the two negatives turn into a positive. So remember, you're always flipping the sign when you're dealing with h values. And then an h value of negative six, what does that mean? Well, from the different cases we went through in those videos, uh, that is a translation or a shift six units left. All right, so that's part E right there. Part F, Y equals X squared plus 0.6. Out of all of these, this one's pretty simple. It's a third one, right? So we got uh, a K value of 0 0.6. It's positive, right? So with K values or H values, all we care about is it positive or is it negative? We don't have as many sub cases like we do with the A value. So this is just a positive, means that there is a translation or a shift 0 0.6 units up because it's positive. If it was negative, it'd be 0 0.6 units down. All right, so that's F. And then finally, we just got G and uh, an H remaining. So Y equals X minus two squared. Well, notice that again, it's in this format, this X minus H squared format. And so notice that the H value is just two, right? X minus H. This is like in brackets, this is like in brackets, h is two. So notice that we switch the sign when we take it out. All right, so the h value is two. What does that mean? There's a translation, uh, two units to the right. All right, and then finally, part h, we got y equals negative x squared minus four. This is actually a combination 
okay? It's actually, notice that there's an A value of negative one, and then there's also a K value of negative four. So with all these other parts, we are just dealing with one of the letters, but in part H, we're dealing with two letters. And again, in future videos, we're gonna be doing more where we're combining all of these letters, but this here is actually in none of these formats. It's like in a Y equals AX squared plus K format, where the A value is negative one, the K value is negative four. So we gotta look, there's um, two transformations here. For the A value of negative one, there's just a reflection in the x-axis. And then a k value of negative four means that there is a translation for units uh, down. All right, so whenever you get something like this, recognize which kind of format you're using, recognize what all the transformation values are, and then just state the transformation.